Hello, welcome to the Friday, August 17th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In today's diary, Xavier points to a little script that helps you anonymize PCAP files. Now, simplistically, you could just change the IP addresses in a PCAP file. There is, for example, a tool TCP Rewrite that does that for you quite nicely. If you do this, don't forget to also change the checksums. If you don't fix the checksums and you only change the first two bytes of the IP address, which is often done, then of course you may be able to reconstruct the IP address by working out a checksum that actually matches. Now, TCP Rewrite has a feature to at least fix the IP checksums. In my experience, it's sometimes at issues with TCP checksums. The script that Xavier shows actually goes a step further because in many protocols, you find the IP addresses as part of the payload. So for example, in SIP traffic, I've seen this quite a bit sometimes in FTP and the like. So what this script allows you to do then is to cut down the payload so you only see the first few bytes or however many bytes you feel comfortable showing. Now, with that, of course, you lose a lot of the value of having a PCAP. I think a nice challenge here, if anybody's interested, would be to write a scapy script that does the IP address change, which is pretty easy in the IP header, of course, with scapy, but also searches the payload for the IP address and then replaces it with the replacement IP address that the user picked. And then we got an interesting vulnerability in OpenSSH. Qualys found it originally by looking at some recent patches made to OpenSSH. Now, it's not a super serious vulnerability, but apparently it goes back uh, in the early days of OpenSSH and it allows you to figure out if a user exists or doesn't exist. In order to exploit the vulnerability, an attacker would send a slightly malformed packet to the OpenSSH server, the error message coming back, well, that depends on whether or not that particular user exists. Now, a proof of concept exploit has been released. It's actually pretty trivial to write it. And then this is sort of a dictionary attack. So the attacker doesn't get a list of users back. Instead, the attacker has to guess which users may exist. And then the SH server will tell it which ones exist and which ones don't exist out of this list. So not a huge issue, but something to be aware of. OpenSSH will log a fatal error in SSH packet get string, and then it says incomplete message in your log file. However, there is no IP address logged, so you don't know necessarily who attacked you unless you correlate this with additional logs. So no rush, but if you are seeing some updates for OpenSSH, then this is probably the reason why. Voice XML is an XML definition that allows you to define interactive voice response systems. So to set up one of those voice-driven customer response services, you typically sign up with a service and then you point a service at this XML file that will then be used to provide responses to users calling in. Well, apparently at least one of these services does have an external XML entity vulnerability. These XXE vulnerabilities are actually quite common when it comes to parsing XML and they essentially allow an attacker to retrieve arbitrary files from the system the XML is parsed on. Now, the reason I mention this is that I find that developers are still not quite aware of this particular vulnerability. Now, yes, a lot of code is moving to JSON and there isn't really a lot of XML being used these days, but you have all these standards around like this voice XML that are certainly still being used and they're going to be used for the foreseeable future. So definitely, if you are developing anything related to XML, do read up on XML external entity vulnerabilities. OWASP, by the way, has a nice cheat sheet that will help you to defend against these vulnerabilities. 
And researchers at the University of Florida came up with an interesting new device to detect skimmers in credit card readers. In the past, a lot of these devices depended on Bluetooth. And there are even some Android apps, I believe, that essentially look for Bluetooth signals that are commonly used by these skimmers that try to steal credit card numbers. Well, uh, this latest device actually uses a test card that you insert into the credit card reader slot and it will detect how many times the card is being read by a read head. So if it's one of those clue on credit card skimmers, then a second read head will try to read the credit card and this device will detect it. Apparently this device is already being used by law enforcement in particular in New York City, which sort of has funded some of this work. Well, that's it for today. The next three weeks, I'll be traveling through Europe and may not get to upload this podcast every day, depending on internet connectivity and the like. First week, September, I'll actually teach a class in Amsterdam defending web application security. So take a look if you would like to attend. If you can come to Amsterdam, I'll also teach the same class at our large conference in Las Vegas at the end of September. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.